Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works, and as you can see from this photo, and if you watched our uh, important channel announcement news video, you'll have already seen this picture, but uh, as you can see here, we have all the bacon bits on. They're all pretty much ready to go. Took way longer than I planned. Of course, everything takes way longer than I planned, but the, the last actual working on video, I think we had gotten to maybe here, and I figured there was no point in showing you me putting the last ones on. So finally, 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 all of these parts are going to get a coat of, uh, to me, a gloss white, and that includes our accommodation block here. That's going to get a coat of gloss white, and then we're going to be picking out all the details and the uh, uh, basically the the deck all that's going to get painted up separately and hopefully that will look awesome um, the reason for painting everything gloss white is uh, that's going to make painting the orange for the Hapag Lloyd containers much much easier and as well as that I'm hoping to apply some decals for some other shipping companies as well. So instead of just having Hapag Lloyd and then all the other containers will just be anonymous blue or green or or black or whatever colors. I'm hoping to be able to have some other logos on here. Um, so that's where we are. Uh, the next thing I'm going to be doing, like I said, is hitting all of this with some gloss white. Um, I've got a a can ready to go and I'm not sure if it's actually going to be enough because when you think that you're going to have to hit not just here you get it fronts and backs too. Now here's an important step. I've handled these an awful lot so my assumption is that there's a lot of finger grease on them. This is just dish detergent whatever your favorite brand is will do the main thing is, you want something that's going to cut grease. I'm just giving them a quick swish here. I've already washed my hands, so they shouldn't have a whole lot of finger grease on them, but, you know, just putting them on some paper towel here. I'm going to let them dry, and that should hopefully avoid any problems. Now recall that we put numbers on the bottom so we're going to be able to get them back in the right places. All right it is a couple days later and as you can see we have a sea of white on top of our container ship. The only thing that's going to remain white is the accommodation block. Everything else was painted white basically to make two things occur. Uh, firstly a lot of these containers were going to want to be orange and if you've ever painted orange you'll know it doesn't like doesn't like covering anything. The best uh, base for orange is usually white. So that way we have a blank slate to put all of our orange paint on for the, the Hapag Lloyd containers. Now, I would like to have other container line names on some of these containers, such as Evergreen. Um, I'm not sure if Cast is still a thing. Uh, I think there's one called Tex, uh, there's also MSC, but a lot of these, uh, container liveries are white lettering on, let's say, green or blue or red or something like that. So what I'm hoping to do is to create some decals that will enable me to put evergreen on some of these, um, as well as putting... Um, other container lines and stuff. Now, I can't print white. Uh, basically, I'm going to have some decals that represent the entire side of these containers, and they'll either be uh, green with a dropout, um, and all the dropout means is that that's an area where the decal will be transparent. So if you put it on a white backdrop like one of these containers, you'll end up with a green container with white lettering. Basically killing two birds with one stone. Um, providing a nice white base for my orange paint 
and I'm also going to have a white background to put what's known as, as a dropout or a reverse text on here. But not only that, it also kind of resets all these containers to the same sort of color. Because when they were, when they had like just the styrene on the top, uh, you could tell it had been added that, that it wasn't part of the original kit. But now that it's all kind of reset to um, a plain white, I think the, uh, I think the, the bacon bits on top look a whole lot better than they did. And this is the first of many, many containers that need to be painted. Now, I, I know a lot of the containers that are going to be painted are going to be on the front and back surfaces, and I'm just basically going to be painting a little square, but yep, I think everybody has realized that there's a lot of a lot of painting to be done here, a lot of individual bits and pieces. So this is Tamiya X6 Orange, which I think is pretty close. The first of many, many containers which need to be painted in many different colors. So I've done all of the orange painting on our front stack of containers here. Um, obviously I still have to put the decals on for the Hapag Lloyd logos. going to be working my way one one stack of containers at a time. Um, I'm going to do all the orange all the way back before I do the other colors. So I think I have all of the orange painting that I need to have done. Although I have to say in person it looks a lot more orange than it does on the uh, camera here. As for all of these white containers that are still on here, some of those are going to be painted in various container like colors but a lot of them are white so that I can apply a decal which you're gonna see in a few minutes but some of these containers right off the bat are gonna be painted light gray and that'll be for Costco and some are gonna be painted silver and those ones are gonna be for Maersk the next image you see is gonna be working on decals at least creating them all right I'm downstairs at my old steam powered computer. It's got one of these um, cathode ray old school um, monitors. So anyway I've got some uh, artwork here on um, Corel Draw. It's a very old version of the program and unfortunately it's been damaged. I can't save anything. So I gotta kind of do everything all in one session. So here you can see these are the the wire frames to develop what the images I want. So this is how they're gonna appear when they print. I know there's way more available logos than this. But these are the ones I can think of at the top of my head, and I think they're certainly a whole lot better than just having nothing but one logo on the ship. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate these over and over again and then create an original and then that'll go out for photocopying. Okay, I'm reasonably satisfied with these images. As you can see I've duplicated them so that it's going to be like um, 28 sets. That's how they look all all rendered. All I have to do is print them. And here they are printed. Now all I have to do is take it to the local photocopy shop Actually, no. Most local co photocopy shops will not do this. Need to find one that's not afraid to run uh, decal sheets through. And good luck with that. So here we have our original printout from my printer. And as you can see, we've got, um, I believe, 28 sets of the same images here. Um, and here are the photocopies. And they're, they're a smidge fizzier, but you know what? Given how small these images are, you know what? I, I'm going to take it as a win. Um, the only one that really has lost some legibility is the, the TEX one. That's this one right here. Um, the Zim actually turned out pretty good. All the other ones look the way I want them to be in. Um, given that the alternative was is I would have none of these container logos. Now if anyone wants to look at the Maersk 
logo and say that little star thing doesn't look quite right. Yeah, well, I bodged that one. Um, it's it's a weird kind of a star, and I went for kind of a simpler image, but I'm happy with it. Now I've only got two versions for the uh, for the twenty footers. That's the Evergreen and the Costco, but I can cut the uh, the MSC one down and use that on some of the 20 footers. So anyway, we're going to see how they end up looking on the white painted container stacks and go from there. And some time has passed. Uh, as you can see, we have some completed stacks of containers here. These have had all the various colors done and it's they've been given a uh, a panel wash to accentuate the uh, the seams where they're they're like stacked together. We have a lot of other ones here that are getting close, darn close. You can see, you know, these ones here have got almost all their decals on. Uh, these ones, not quite yet. Uh, they. Uh, still require some more painting. You can see there's some yellow on this end stack that needs to be done. Ah! It'd be it'd be good if I stopped throwing them around. Anywho, then as we move towards the back, you've got you know, they they get more and more less complete. So, I'm more than halfway done painting these. It may not seem like it, but when you consider that you know, uh, even the ones on the back have two or three colors uh, painted. I am getting there. There's certainly going to be people out there who are going to say, you know, in the comments, I did say this was going to be the hardest part. Ah, uh, I never said it wasn't going to be. I knew that this was going to be very, very difficult. And I have a few observations to make uh, for anyone else who chooses to build this model. As you can see... All of my end grain of my containers here. You can see I've chosen to paint all of the container ends here. And you know, that's not really necessary. You could probably limit it to the three outer stacks and the three upper stacks and probably just paint these middle ones here dark gray or something like that. And you could probably save a lot of time. Uh, the main reason that I've chosen to paint them all is the same reason that most of us will completely paint and detail an engine that we're never going to see. It's there, and we put the hood down, we never see it again. So, a little bit of stubbornness on my part. Um, I'm persevering here. I am tempted just to shove all this aside, do some work on the Sea Dragon, but... I really want to get this one done. It'd be nice to have it done this year. And a lot of that has nothing to do with the model. It has to do with, you know, personal things, how busy I am. So, uh, having wasted, what, the last three, four minutes, it's time to start painting again. So, I have completed the decaling. These uh, containers here, they have had the panel wash put on, and... The panel wash was pretty much put on uh, probably a couple months ago. Um, these were outliers. They were the ones that I got done pretty much complete earlier on. And yeah, it has been months. Um, all of these guys here, all of these guys still require panel wash. There, these guys still require panel wash. I have four stacks here that I've put the panel wash on one side. Very, very tedious process. And I knew it was going to be tedious. Um, you know, everything, doing the, the painting, uh, the decaling, I knew it was going to be tedious. It's been the time consumingness of it. Just to, let's say, if you're, if you're, if you're doing the green, just to paint the green on one block of containers 
it would be like 30 or 40 minutes. And you're like, wow, where did that time go? And uh, a lot of times I would uh, work on painting containers for, let's say, three days straight, um, maybe an hour and a half each day. And then next thing you know, five days would go by without me doing any work on it. So that's why it has taken just months and months. For those of you who have been waiting for this project with bated breath, my apologies. And I'm going to go back to um, <laughs> doing panel wash and see if I can get at least all this pile here having one side done. And then I'm going to take a break and probably tomorrow come back and do the other side. Anyway. Let's let's press on. Many months later. So as that card just said, it is several months later since the last little bit that I recorded. All of the container stacks have been painted. They've been weathered. There's only one little thing I need to do with them, and that is I had used Tamiya accent color. This is dark brown which worked okay, except um, if we look at this one here, but you can see on the silver, there's areas where the paint has actually been removed. I don't know what the panel wash had against the silver, but <laughs> it wanted to strip it right off. So most of my silver containers, at least on the tops, need a little touch up. Now, I will admit that they definitely ended up a lot more weathered than I wanted them to be. And that is the, one of the many reasons this took so long, because I would apply the panel wash as sparingly as I could. And I, I gotta tell you, I mean, it would sometimes just flow across the whole uh, end of the containers here. Now, the ends you're barely going to see anyway, because when they're on the ship... They're, you know, like right next to each other. But still, yeah, it swooshed around a little bit more than I wanted. So, obviously, I need to touch up my silver containers. Um, and then hopefully that'll be it for the containers. And, I mean, I was sitting at a railway crossing watching a double stack container train go by. And I was looking at the containers and I was thinking, shoot, these things are pretty scuzzy looking. So I decided not to worry too much about the fact that perhaps they ended up a little bit more weathered than I would have liked. So, but why did it take so long? Well, you've got to feel like working on it, and a lot of times I didn't. If I had to put in like a solid hour and a half every day, it probably would have only taken a month to get these painted. A, a month for this? Really? Really? Are you kidding? This took a ton of time, folks. Just a ridiculous amount of time. Uh, I'm going to have to review my footage and figure out which silver I used because I need to touch up these containers. But what I want to do right now is I want to do the, the green decking on the superstructure. I want to get that done and feel like I accomplished something because I want to get this. I want to get this project moving again and get it off the workbench. So, uh, one of the things that I had a little bit of a panic attack about was um, the lifeboats, or particularly the lifeboat and the ship's boat. I couldn't remember if I took them off the sprues, if they were laying on my other workbench, if they were now debris on the floor. Uh, fortunately, I do have those two items. This little guy right here is the ship's boat. It actually sits on the side of the superstructure. There's a little crane above it. That will have to be painted some sort of fluorescent orange or red color. Further success, we have the little, the little running shoe of uh, of the lifeboat and that's one of these ones that, that that fits on the ramp at the stern of the ship and takes a dive into the water so i'm gonna have to paint those white 
in preparation of putting a some sort of a fluorescent color on them. Because I'm a sad, obsessive fellow, one thing I have to do something about is the propeller. The blade you can see right in the middle is as Ravel gives it to you. And all the other ones I have filed to a much finer profile. This one needs a tidy bit of cleanup, but you can see how thick the blades originally were, and they look a whole lot better after you've filed them down. So here is our accommodation block. It's a very, very complicated little assembly. I don't know how many parts go into it, quite a few. But I've got the decals on. But the other, the only thing I want to do on this now is I'm probably going to put a little bit of smoke staining up here at the top. Uh, mostly because the the fuel that these use, even though it's a diesel engine, it's a very uh, it's a very nasty sort of fuel used in most of these ships, even the clean versions. So that's about all I want to do on this now. It's nice to have this part all wrapped up. I'm continuing to pick away at this and getting it closer to the finish line. You can see I've got some of the decals on. Here's the uh, name of the shipping company. And up here in the bow we've got, you can see the bow thruster decal in. We have the the, the draft markings, I still have to put the uh, little picture there that indicates that it has a bulbous bow. The decals on this kit are quite nice. We continue to limp towards completion here. All the decals on the ship itself are now applied. Still look pretty pristine. I'm going to do some, I'm thinking mild rust staining in places. I'm not going to go too crazy, but as my containers ended up being a little more weathered than I originally intended, I don't think we should have the ship looking all pristine. Um, I did some minor weathering up here on the bow. You can see just, just a little bit of panel wash in and around the machinery. Anchors, of course, are going to end up being moderately weathered, I think. I think I'm going to bite the bullet and glue the superstructure on. That seems like a fairly terrifying thing to do, so let's get it done. Just going to use a little bit of super glue. Oh, it feels so good to be able to do this. <laughs> so one of my last major things is going to be to do some hopefully minor rust staining kind of coming down the flanks. Uh, I don't want to do a lot of rust on this. Container ships are generally pretty sharp looking, especially the ones owned by the major lines. But everything that sails the ocean tends to get um, a little bit weather beaten over time. So most of the reason why I want to do some mild weathering on it is because my containers ended up a little a little more grungy than I had originally intended so the ship should reflect this as well. So I'm just going to use some testers rust and like I said I just want it to be I'm hoping fairly faint and I figure where these where these structures are um, would probably be an area where uh, a, there would be a little bit more rust staining coming down. So that's the next thing to do. Alrighty, I hope it shows on camera. It's not quite as obvious as it is in person, but I have applied the rust staining. Um, and you can see it's mostly underneath each one of these structures here. As I move it in the light, you can see it. You can see it coming into an existence there. I was thinking of making it heavier over the logos, but uh, just didn't feel right. Where it's heaviest is around the anchors. And I also concentrated on these scuttles up here where water that splashes in uh, can drain off of that, uh, that foremost deck there. And as well, if we go to the stern, you can see on the stern, the rust staining comes down 
back there as well. So I'm now thinking it's time to start gluing all these stacks of containers on. Um, I really don't see any reason not to. Um, am I making excuses not to finish this? Not really. It's just I, I want to make sure that I've got things done. That I don't glue a bunch of things together and be like, oh, darn, I shouldn't have done that. But I'm going to start putting the, the stacks of containers on. Actually, before I start super gluing those containers on, I just wanted to give you a nice overview shot. I know it's cluttered here on the Clutter Zone 3, which is this table I happen to be working on right now. But just so you can see the general overview of the ship with the accommodation block in place and all the decks empty. Since I'm going to be putting the containers on and leaving them there permanently, I didn't think there was any point in applying a wash to my, my deck covers. Yay! Momentous occasion! Cheer applause! We have that first stack in place. Hey, hey, we are down to our last seven stacks of containers over here on the right. These guys are all glued on. And I'm feeling pretty good about this. And in case you were wondering, um, it was very uh, helpful writing the numbers on the bottom of the stacks of containers. Um, it enabled everything to get glued in place in order so those numbers if you didn't see the previous uh, episode here you can see that you know we've got this one here is going to be 33 this one's going to be 34 35 and so on so I found it very helpful to have marked those in advance and that way all the stacks end up in the right places. Now I know it's true that <clears throat> there's not a whole lot of difference, but there is a slight um, rounding down towards the front, and this just made it so much easier. And happy day! This is the last stack of containers glued on. And I'm just gonna just just gonna take my hand away and let these last seven stacks let their super glue completely go off uh, but that's a good feeling i think i only have one more thing to glue on and we'll see that in a few seconds now from the i am surprised they didn't lose it file we have the propeller and that's the only part i think that i have left to glue on the ship so let's do that now and then I suppose we're looking at gluing the ship onto the base. And there we go. Now we can move. And if we come to the bow, you can see that I gave the, uh, the bow thruster a wash of um, whatever panel wash I'm using. That brought out the detail in there pretty good. Just the stand now. And it's all done. I really didn't think this was going to be one of these projects that sat and sat and sat on the workbench. Um, and only part of the sitting on the workbench is the fault of the model. And not because of any actual flaw in the model. It's not like, oh my god, the parts don't fit. The parts went together like Lego. Almost. Uh, everything went together great. Uh, any assembly, uh, any assembly difficulties were me insisting that the containers shouldn't be all level and perfect on the top. If we turn it like this, you can see how the heights are jagged, and that's what I was looking for all this time. Uh, the only thing that really you could say is the fault of the model is how difficult it is to paint all of these containers a different color. And there was no way you were ever going to get around to that 
and that's not a failing of the model. It's not a failing of Ravel or anything like that. This is something that I believe everybody who has built this model has said is, wow, you know, painting all the containers these different colors, it really soaks up the time. So, yeah, I would say most of the delay in completing this model was just, um, I'm getting older and working a full-time job and a part-time job is taking more out of me than, than it used to. So there are times when a month will go by and I just won't have energy for anything other than just basic existing. So it is all done and I'm real happy with it. Uh, the weathering on the containers may be a little bit more extreme than, than I was originally intending. But now that it's all together, I'm thinking it looks pretty good. And about a month ago, I was sitting at a railway crossing watching a double stack container train go by. And yeah, containers are pretty scuzzy looking. Even there was even a lot of Hapag Lloyd containers and, you know, they were pretty, they were pretty gross looking. All things considered, it turned out the way I'd like it to. The weathering on the hull, I kept that fairly minor. Uh... Container ships don't usually come in contact with things a lot. Not like the ships going through the Welling Canal where they literally scrape their way through. I'm pretty sure that container ships that go through the Panama Canal, they've got those those little locomotives to, to center them in the, in the locks and things like that. And I don't think there's a whole lot of scraping going on there. So we will do some close-up pictures here. So, thanks for watching, and until next time, just keep on modeling. Sit, Indy, sit. Good dog. <laughs> <laughs>